The cat likes funky jewelry. The I like funky jewelry. He's funky jewelry. <laughs> He's been making funky jewelry. And that's okay. It's not funky. It's just... I call it funky jewelry because I'm just quoting someone. Yeah. She really likes the... she. It's beachy and beachy bracelets. It is. He's He's been in a beachy frame of mind. Yes. So for today's cup, we're going to do a revisit because uh, as we're recording this, this is on uh, the last day of April. Mm-hmm. And that was April the 30th, 2022 for posterity's sake. Has the eclipse fucked y'all up too? Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether the eclipse goes over your region or whatever. It still has a bearing. Mm -hmm. And this one has been rough. And I think it was even like a partial eclipse or something. I don't think that there was the corona around the eclipse. Well, you know. My corona. um, That normally is. But it still has a bearing on the frequencies. Mm -hmm. Because everything is vibration and frequency. Everything. Yeah. And so it's just like the, um, I was trying to think of what that that little toy is where the balls hit together and it shows how, it's a chain reaction. Newton's crater. Cradle. (laughs) Not (laughs) crater. crater. (laughs) (laughs) Newton may have had a crater. Maybe they need to name a crater after him. Maybe. But it is, it is very much how that works, how everything works. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... No, nothing is isolated or in a vacuum. Right. And for some of us, those things affect us more greatly than others. Mm-hmm. Some people are just not aware of it. They, they just think they're having a crummy day or whatever. Trust me, if you're around other humans, it's affecting them somehow, some way. Yeah. It's like solar activity. And people don't even think of that. It's just nobody thinks about it is that. all Newton's cradle. Cradle. <laughs> you almost said it too. Oh, I think it's <laughs> that mental suggestion on that. And it's just like Thursday, a couple of days before, I was t- my energy level was nothing. Mm-hmm. And when I say my energy level is nothing, I, I literally mean that. I mean, I was having a hard time staying awake. Yeah. And so today, the energy has been so dark and so heavy it's been shit man that it has just i mean at one point it was a very crushing type energy Mm -hmm. it was mm, depressing as fuck man so planetary alignments things that's going on right now and so it's a matter of trying to encourage each other during this period of time Mm -hmm. but um the video that we have decided to revisit was one that was originally done on July the 3rd, 2021. So, and everybody's like, it's not even been a year. It was good. <laughs> yeah, but we've since got new viewers. Oh, sure we likely, They haven't seen it yet. And we do upload daily. So, yeah. like, it's hard It's hard to keep up when you upload like, like that much. But it's a, it, that's why people do revisits. That's all good. Right. Right. And I had one that was all planned for... You know, and everything. And sometimes life just happens. Yeah, shit hits the fans sometimes. And you just need to like, be like, okay, For, hold for up. some of us, yeah. It's just a matter of, you know, sometimes you, you can, the you know, dodge and dive. And then sometimes it just hits you no matter what. Mm-hmm. So, what this one is discussing was a broadcast by Paul Harvey. Mm-hmm. And not knowing what age our viewers are, I'm sure it's a variety of ages. Harvey Weinstein. He was one, absolutely not. He was one of the best radio broadcasters I think that's ever been. Paul Harvey had the rest of the story. He was always a very gracious, humble, you know, broadcaster. I don't know that I ever heard anybody say anything bad about him. He was professional. He was just top notch. The only time I've I've ever heard of him though is like when we did that video mm-hmm. and now. Yeah. So I. You really would I, behoove you to go back and listen to some of his shows. Are there channels that like re-upload his? Probably. Stuff? Probably because there's channels that uh, even as far as Art Bell and stuff, but I'm sure that there are uh, other channels that have old radio broadcasts. Mm-hmm. But this one. Uh, 
that we are featuring in this was from April the 3rd of 1965. Nice. This was a few months before my arrival, my deployment date on this planet. And what was I thinking? When God said, will you go? And I raised my hand and I'm like, who? I, you, I, you didn't show me the fine print. Well, you didn't give me a magnifying glass <laughs> for the fine print, man. Well, you know, apparently all of us are here. It, and there is nobody that's on this planet by accident. It's a matter of yeah. what we choose to do with the times that we're in. And so, I mean, seriously, like our journey, that's to help other people. Sure. Sure. We can, uh, you know, the choice is to be, either be a blessing or to be a curse. Mm hmm. And even those times that we have been a curse to others to try to make amends for that, you know, it goes back to those 12 steps. It does when we, you know, when we possibly could, we made amends to others unless trying to make amends would cause more damage. Mm -hmm. And on that, we pray that, you know, that God will forgive us and, and leave it alone. That's why I learned, like, if there's a falling out, don't contact them again. It depends on what the filing out is. If it was your fault, if you did something... But if it wasn't your fault, like, don't contact them no, again. No, no. I mean, why would you apologize for something you didn't do? That's silly. Exactly. It, it, that is the responsibility of that person that did the offense mm -hmm. to come to, you know, to you. And there are some people that are so, you know, unaware of self and their actions that you will never get that. Right. And that's a matter of forgiving even when you don't want to. Mm hmm You know, even when it's your uh, right, if you want to say, to hold a grudge. Uh, that grudge, all it does is hurt you. We forgive yeah, exactly. because we have all needed forgiveness. Mm-hmm. So, Paul Harvey in this discusses if he were the devil. Yeah, almost playing devil's advocate in a way. The writing on this was just top notch. Mm -hmm. And it definitely holds the test of time. Um, so it's not a matter of me playing the recording. I do have a link to the original recording, which, again, 1965, and the audio's not that great. So my version of reading what he has said. Mm -hmm. So I think it has value. Yeah. Especially in times such as this. Mm -hmm. So enjoy. Yes. For today's cup of coffee, I'm actually going to start out with uh, a writing from Paul Harvey. And for those of you who may not know who Paul Harvey was, an absolutely amazing uh, radio speaker and just always very thought-provoking. And it was a wonderful thing to listen to him. And he always ended his, um, his show or his segment or whatever with, uh, this is Paul Harvey, good day. It was a very, it was his signature line. I've got youngest kid because he doesn't know who Paul Harvey is. And uh, I need to make sure that he does know who Paul Harvey is because he was an amazing person. You can speak until I start reading. And then okay. <laughs> He's just sort of sitting here and it's like, it's always kind of an interesting thing when you're getting to read something. It's like, do you want an audience? You know, it's like, are we doing uh, forensics like we did in high school? That's not like clinical forensics where you're dissecting bodies you dissect languages and poetries and essays and i'm fine with both i honestly think that the dissection of poetry unless you are going to be an english scholar honestly, is it just ruins pointless magic. it does it ruins uh it has it's like biz ed has ruined many a kid from ever wanting to have any kind of take part you know partake in sports or physical activity or whatever yeah so dodgeball that will knock oh the dodgeball is sales out of you anything. Oh, that, <laughs> dodgeball is sort of like hazing i don't know if it's where we have 
gotten rid of most rites of passage in our culture and that dodgeball... They'll make sure to hit you in the head. Oh, yeah. Dodgeball is one of the remaining rites of passage or what. I, I don't have bastard child coffee. I actually had enough left from this morning to where... I kind of wish I brought my drink out. I have a proper cup of coffee. <laughs> so I may have to hop off the porch and go over them to the other door. Oh, you'll be all right. This actually is not long. And again, this was written in 1965, and uh, this is, that was the year of my birth, and this is my birth month, my Leo self on the 25th, 25th. Mm -hmm. my little Leo sun, Libra rising, moon in Gemini. We could have skipped out on the Gemini part, but you know. <laughs> no, as far as the moon in Gemini, what that does for me, it's like, it is a thirst for knowledge and newness. Uh, I mean, I have to have new knowledge, new uh, activities, different things like that. To It's a matter of needing newness, the f a freshness. But it's one of those that it's almost like a fixation. It's like, oh, study, 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 done. I'm full. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah. So that's one of those, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. This essay that he wrote, and I will post a link to uh, his actual oration of this because it's brilliant. And there's no way that I'm going to try to even sound like Paul Harvey because that would be foolish. Uh, I'm just going to sound like myself. And this essay is called, If I Were the Devil. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I seize the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I began with a campaign of whispers. The wisdom of the serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. Then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves, until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions. Just let those run wild, until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and defy science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbols of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what do you bet I could get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich? I would caution against extremes and hard work in patriotism and moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus, I could undress you in public. I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. That's prophetic. Li literally what's going on right now. <laughs> Absolutely. This was written in 1965. 
and Mr. Harvey was an extremely intelligent man. And there were quite a few people that could see this coming even then. And you think of this, 56 years later. It's and coming true. Absolutely, all of it has come true and more. Mm -hmm. there, there are things that are happening that even he couldn't have foreseen. And I think that's a good thing. Because uh, things that are happening in the world today, for those who are older, it is so difficult for them to wrap their heads around and it's, it is a form of cognitive dissonance. They know it's happening, but they still are in denial that it's happening because they don't want to believe that it's happening. And, and for the kids that are growing up that will believe this is normal, oh, God help them. Until God comes I don't, back, we're screwed. Well, I, I don't know. I think it's a matter that there is hope, and that is one of the things I always like to have a hopeful message here on the Sabbath. And he is our hope. Uh, and that is a confident expectation of something occurring. That is not uh, just, you know, airy-fairy dreaming that something good will happen. So there, there is a biblical definition of hope that is different than uh, people, you know, people use that. It's like pray. They don't want to understand the power behind prayer. It's interesting because people will discount the power of prayer, and yet if someone speaks a spell over them, they would have a tendency to believe that. Okay. It's words and intention. It's just a matter of who you speak in the words to and what your intention is. Exactly. So I think that, <laughs> and it's like, uh, how many times do you hear people say, well, I guess we'll just pray. Oh, no, that's the first thing to do. Yeah. Not the last thing. And and it's like, and then they wonder why their prayers don't get answered. Well, you didn't, you knew that you wasn't a request to, to begin with. That wasn't a prayer. That was just, uh, you know, you talking to the ceiling about defeat. That's not, that isn't going to do anything. No, it's not. Prayer is always the answer. And it's one of those that, how do we stop this ball that has started rolling like a snowball headed for hell, literally. We start as individuals. Yep. It is a matter of finding out who we are, what we believe, why we believe what we believe. It's a matter of reclaiming our faith in God, that connection. It's a matter of reclaiming our families and then our communities and then our towns and our cities and our states. Mm -hmm. And Gandhi was wonderful and he said, be the change that you want to see in the world. Gandhi was a cool little dude. Yeah. So it, this is a message of hope for this Sabbath. Uh, Leo King and others have said that planetary alignments over the next couple of days, especially on Tuesday, uh, can be um, interesting, that they can be rough, that they can be emotional, uh, he said that it could be very much like November of 2013. That got my attention. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Uh, we've been there, done that. Mm -mm. I don't even want the t-shirt. just the no, that's a hell no. Yeah. I ain't getting any of that. That was, that was 2013. I, we're still trying to find... That I, year was the worst. I, I don't know us. that we even know where all the pieces got scattered. And that's I don't okay. know about most of them. I don't know. Maybe God gave us a new puzzle to put together. And if so, that's okay. Yeah. Seriously. Why not? Why not close the previous chapter and open a new one? Exactly. But there's things that we know not to do. Yeah. Do not. If somebody calls you and says, bail me out, mm -mm, you sit there and go, no, nah, I'll talk to you when you get out. You do that. You got yourself in there. You get yourself out. There are a few exceptions. And we don't know what's ahead for us either. We don't know. No. So why why just stop at the like let's say why stop at the previous chapter when there's a when the story is a lot better absolutely up ahead absolutely and that is what we hold on to that all this has been for a reason that it, it will serve a purpose and at some time we will understand that is that is what is so hard for me I can go through just about anything if I understand the reason behind it. 
which that doesn't always work with God because it's a matter of uh, you'll understand later. He, he, Trust well, and follow now. Exactly. Because if he gave if he gave his plans right away, like, well, the devil would know exactly. immediately. So, yeah, he does have to speak in cryptic tongues. Sure, because the general does not let his enemy know his battle plans. No. Nope. So, I'd, we've got problems going down the, the road. I hope y'all didn't hear that. Because we don't know what that was. We've had neighbors with issues lately. So, anyhow, I guess we'll end on that note. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's just like, oh, we go we go back in the house. and I, I need to snoop. Well, no, you don't need to snoop. That's somebody else's business. Don't you be snooping. Mind your own, mind your own business. Goodbye. So, if you all have paranormal or supernatural encounters, if you've had experiences with aliens, UFOs, with or without probing, you know, it depends on the probing on that, whether I want to know about the probing or not. If you have, as far as cryptids, uh, meth heads, in search of meth heads. Hell, we found them. That's all you can say. We don't need the meth heads. We need the cryptids. And uh, <laughs> alternate reality. My God, I feel like we, I think we've been dropped in an alternate reality. That what was it, Wave X or whatever it was, <laughs> several years ago. Oh, that was, Wave X messed butter big enough. Uh, Wave X messed everything up. So we will talk about the possibility that we were shifted into an alternate reality on a later date. Yeah. But anyhow, send your encounters of whatever nature they may be to cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com and don't you give up hope and you all have a beautiful blessed day Bye. And so we hope that you all enjoyed this revisit and rather than redoing Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and leave it as it was, warts and all. <laughs> warts and all. <laughs> well, these videos are like, they're sort of like snapshots. Yeah. It's a moment in time. Mm -hmm. And it never hurts to go back through the photo album and, you know, yeah. look at them again. Even if some of them sting a little bit, but it's like, hmm. Well, it's all what right. What can I learn from that? Sure. It's like, so I bumbled a word. Well, then it's not gotten any better about that. I'm still going to bumble words. Yeah, but at least we can make a joke out of it now. Oh, sure. Well, we made a joke out of it then. Yeah, so. You know, rather than sit here and edit and do 15 retakes and all that <laughs> stuff. And, yeah. No, why not? Why not just be real with it? Mm-hmm. Then, then do all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's our shtick. It's just, it's raw. It is as it's raw, raw and as real it's as it us. gets. It's just us, man. It's just us. And and it's like we, as far as viewers, we think of you all as extended family. Mm-hmm. You know. Absolutely. So. Even though some of us lurk. The high lurk gang. <laughs> you've gang, always. Gang, man. And you've always got family members that they're the ones that's sitting over there in the corner and just looking at everybody else. And it's like, yeah. that's all right. You just let them have their place. It's not that we you don't wave, love You wave at them, ask them if they want a cup of coffee, and you go out. It's not that we don't love y'all. It's just like, hmm, I like to observe. Well, that's okay, but that's kind of creepy. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who said I wasn't creepy, man? <laughs> Who said I wasn't creepy? There's not enough of us left to have somebody that's, you know, they're go you're going to be noticed. Usually it's like, oh, look, there he is. He's sulking in the corner. I'm not sulking. I'm there with a weird grin on my face. I'll be like, hmm. You, you are never sitting quietly in the corner anywhere. Because I can't shut my damn mouth. <laughs> I got a Leo rising. I got shit to say. <laughs> and that's okay. So. <laughs> yeah, like this bitch. <laughs> that's, she's another one. Oh, Lord, that is the most mouthy cat. Yeah. But we just want you all to know that you're loved and that you are appreciated. Mm -hmm. And that's that's for real. Yes. So if you've had experiences with paranormal, supernatural encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, 
if there's a favorite Paul Harvey show that you had. Uh, any of those things, send us an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. If you have prayer requests, that, that's also available here. Yeah. Because prayer is the glue that has been holding us together for years. Yeah. And so, oh Lord, we need it. Everybody, everybody needs does. it. <laughs> they certainly do right now. Also, tell us what radio show that you want us to find out about, look up. Yeah. Like, do y'all have any that you liked? Oh, radio used to be great. Mm-hmm. Now, there is a channel on YouTube, and I can't remember the name of it right now, that they had uh, some of the old radio plays. It's like Lights Out and uh, The Shadow and some the of those really they, cool that, that, things. That they did a sound effect with the toilet bowl and it freaked people out. Oh, that was, that was um, War of the Worlds. That was a, you know, I know. Orson Welles thing. And, um, yeah, anytime that you're putting down something. When I, when I would play that in radio, we had, you know, it was a matter of stopping. I can't remember if it was every half hour. There's there's regulations on that now after this. Mm-hmm. That it was either every 30 minutes or maybe every 15 minutes that you had to pause it and make the announcement. This is radio broadcast of the War of the, War of the World. Which I hated trying to say that. War um, of the worlds. To let people know that it was, you know, it wasn't real. It was fiction. Well, we got a lot of fiction that's being, you know, out there as fact these days. You would and also, that's horrifying. You would also read the Weekly World News on the radio and have to, be, and people will call and be like, is this real? Yeah. No, it's not. But And, and it is. <laughs> it makes you realize, honestly, how gullible some people can be. Mm-hmm. And um, even though it was just a very small local market here. I mean, we didn't see people be gullible just by, I hate to get political, but yeah, politics. You well, can see you how know, people are gullible there. Well, if people are gullible in just in general. Mm-hmm. And when you do have some kind of platform, because this was before all this stuff with the internets, um the authority that people give to those who have a little bit louder voice. Mm-hmm. And we did. We had radio groupies. We would have some people that, you know, that would just, every time we opened the doors, there they were just sort of hanging out. And it's like, okay, which was kind of weird. I mean, I mean, they were nice people, but it was just weird i mean that's what happens when you become a public figure and a, and a radio personality right it's almost like doing a live taping of it like you know how people are on stage and that's right. when they record whatever but now i will say and i have <laughs> some people because the reason i love radio is because of the illusion mm-hmm. and as opposed to if somebody sees you it, it's there's no longer an illusion. You would not believe the amount of people who love watching podcasts. Like I've never understood like that. Jen why, and Julian, why? uh Brittany Broski and whatever the uh, Sarah Shower, their podcast, uh why? what was it? Uh, violating community guidelines. Like I d I don't know, and it's just like you're basically watching television then. Yeah. So and like, that's okay. I mean, <laughs> and that's okay. the The thing is with ours, what we say every now and then we'll have something that is visual, mm-hmm. but for the most part, we want it to where people can do whatever else and still hear it, mm-hmm. that they don't feel like they're missing something. Yeah. When I was in radio, I hated doing as as far as if we were on location or anything like that because i always felt that people were going to go oh that's what she looks like and that you regardless you were going to disappoint someone Mm -hmm. um but every now and then i would have people you know you would get love letters or uh, i know there was one guy that showed up randomly because i was he it was he called himself mountain man and I was the morning DJ, which meant that I, you know, went on the air at one point uh, before we had it automated on the transmitter and stuff. I actually started the transmitter. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, six o'clock in the morning, I'm still trying to wake up. I'm still trying to get my voice going. I'm trying to get my coffee because, yes, coffee is my life's blood. 
and heard a knock on the door and it's like okay do i do or do i not <laughs> and here stands this guy now remember we're mountains he's got a pair of bibbed overalls on barefoot for real uh, bushy hair, beard. I think he may have had sunglasses on, or maybe. And he's and he just he's like I'm the mountain man. And I'm like, oh, okay, come on in. You want a cup of coffee? I didn't phase me. <laughs> it never phased me. Yeah, because just like you, you were, he was real. Yeah, and he just it was a matter of him just shaking my hand, and that was it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he would call in and make requests and different things like that. So that was okay. But with the internet and stuff, you've got, there's always some wonderful people. Yeah. But you never know if you're going to get somebody that has some kind of an issue. Mental. That is going to fixate or something. Yeah, like schizophrenia or something like that. Um, Some sort of, like, we're not talking about the people who are treated for those things. It's oh, the, they know there's those yeah. people out there that they got issues. I guarantee you that those other... And that doesn't... You don't have to be any kind of public figure. It's the ones that don't control like, right. and don't want to help themselves. That's the thing. There's people that get hooked on their neighbors and stuff like that. We had that happen to us. Mm-hmm. Whew. Just sitting here. Yeah. Just sitting here. So... Yes, this is this is our shtick. We're real. This is if you see us, if you were to see us at McDonald's, well, first of all, you wouldn't recognize us. But anyhow, if I we mean, were, they would recognize our voices, right? If we were at McDonald's having coffee with you or whatever, it'd be like, oh my God, they really are like that. And it's like, yes, yes. This, there's when no do we pretense. Go sit in McDonald's, when do we ever actually sit in? There have been we times. We should do that though. Like, yeah. Just, just, yeah. I'm waiting for the new Starbucks to open up. Yeah, there's one to 30 minutes away from us. Which I know that they be asshole, but there's a lot of things that be asshole. They're overpriced on a lot of their shit. They really are, but, like, they're good. They're good. It is just a thing. And for one of those to come to our tiny region... That's pretty exciting. <laughs> there's not a lot for us to be excited about, so we're excited about a Starbucks. Did I tell you what, uh, like, I wish they would put, like, some sort of mainstream something other than Subway in our town. Right. But guess what the, ma- the mayor of our town is doing with the money that we keep, that the taxpayers... Well, they put He's it sending in- it over to the other town. What? Yeah. Oh, God. I don't even want to think about it. Anyhow, that has nothing to do with Paul Harvey podcasts the illusion of radio no but it just popped in my mind and i was like right mm. that's because neither of us took medication today as far as the i don't the got ADHD. medication i don't <laughs> got medication but know that you are loved and that's yeah. that's a for real thing we we care about uh people that take the time to share coffee and ponderings with us mm-hmm. so lord willing we'll see you on the next cut yes If you like this video and like this revisit, don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that notification button for daily notifications of our daily uploads. Thank you all. Have a good and send your recommendations. All right. We'll see you on the next cup. Eat a lovely cake. All right. Bye.